Hi everybody, I hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to the 100 days of the 2023 National Electrical Code. My name is Ryan Jackson. We're still in Article 625, but we only have one more thing to talk about, and that is 625.43, which is the requirements for a disconnecting means for electric vehicle supply equipment. So 625.43, marking requirements for remote disconnecting means were added. Um, I really like this change. I wish some of the other code making panels would, would see this change and, and kind of embrace the concept and run with it. This was first added, that this first this idea uh, was first added with transformers a while back, back in I think 2014 for the uh, for section 450.14. So it says for electric vehicle supply equipment and wireless power transfer equipment. Now, we know what EVSE is, right? and that's what we're showing here in the photograph. You drive up, plug in your car, electric vehicle supply equipment. What is wireless power transfer equipment? Well, that is like those pads that you can set your cell phone on, on and charge it. You know, we have the same thing for electric vehicles. We have pads that you can put in your garage floor, park your car over it, and, and charge your vehicle wirelessly. And in fact, there's even test strips of road where they have paved the road with that technology built into the road. Now, of course, it, it begs the question of, of who would pay for that. And, you know, I, I don't know if that's the, the way of the future or who knows, you know, maybe that's uh, maybe that's what the infrastructure will be in 50 years. But for right now. We're talking about the NEC, so we're talking about premises wiring systems. We're not talking about paving roads with, you know, with wireless technology. So for EVSE and wireless power transfer equipment, equipment rated more than 60 amps or 150 volts to ground, a readily accessible disconnecting means is required. It has to be lockable in accordance with 110.25. All right, so you have to have a disconnect. And if it's a large charging system like the one that we're showing here, more than 60 amps or more than 150 volts to ground. So if this is 480 or if it's, you know, more than 60 amps, then you got to have a disconnecting means and it has to be capable of being locked in the open position. Now, here in the picture, what a great example of an installation, except for the stupid sign right in front of the disconnect, right? <laughs> move it one side or the other. I mean, like seriously, you could have put that sign anywhere, but you put it right in front of the disconnect, so I can't even open it. So anyway, let's just kind of do me a favor. Let's just kind of slide that sign out of the way. I'm sure that when you open that disconnect, when you turn it off, you can put a padlock through it. So this installation complies other than the obvious clearance issue. Now, here's what really changed. If the disconnect is located remotely, then the location of the disconnecting means must be marked on the EVSE or the WPTE, the wireless power transfer equipment. All right, so again, this is something that the conceptually came into the code in Article 450. So we have a rule for transformers that says, listen, you have to have a transformer within, so you have to have a disconnect within sight of your transformer. And the disconnect uh, has to be lockable. But then it says, well, it might not be feasible to have the disconnect within sight of the transformer. So if it's not within sight, put it somewhere else and make it lockable and tell people where it is, right? Because with the idea of having a remote disconnect that's lockable, that's been in the code since forever, right? You go to 430.102B for motors and it says, yeah, if you can't have a disconnect next to the motor, put it somewhere else and make sure it's lockable. But wouldn't it be nice if it told you where the disconnect was? So here you've got this equipment. It's supplied by a circuit exceeding 60 amps or 150 volts to ground. And we're at the equipment and we're looking around. We don't see the disconnect. Okay, fine. I'm sure there's a disconnect somewhere. But now the rule is you have to tell me where that disconnect is. I mean, wherever it is, I'm sure it's lockable. And that's great. But if I can't find it, then what's the point? So now we've got some clear language. You have gotta tell me where the disconnect is. I can find it, do the lockout, tag out, right? Do the entire, uh, the, the procedure, verify the presence of, the absence of voltage, and go to work. So there you go, 625.43.